Hello, everyone, and welcome. Uh, we'll go ahead and get things started now. I am Sam Agliero, a sales application engineer here at Remcom, and today I'll be going over some of the new features of Wireless Insight 3.3.1. These features are focused mostly on geometry processing because as simulation technologies have advanced, so have the problems people have been trying to solve with them. We're now needing to handle very large, complex geometries for these types of simulations, so we've taken more steps to streamline and optimize how geometry is processed in Wireless Insight. If at any point anyone has a question during the webinar, there should be a window visible like this on your screen. You can enter the question in this box circled in red and send it, and I or one of our staff will get to it at the end of the webinar. For a brief overview of the new features, uh, as I said, they're focused on geometry processing. The first major feature is processing optimizations, which are general improvements to our geometry processing that reduce the time needed to process the geometry. Second is geometry caching, which reduces or removes the need to reprocess geometry at the beginning of each simulation. Currently, these features are supported only by our X3D propagation model. To go a little more in depth with the geometry processing optimizations, one of the features in this major feature is multi-threading. We've taken steps to multi-thread more of the sub-steps of geometry processing. This increases the CPU utilization of the step overall to decrease the runtime. Uh, we've also improved our data structures, so it is a, we use a more efficient method of processing and storing information about the geometry to further reduce the runtime. The second major feature is geometry caching. Uh, geometry processing is now its own step in simulations, so when that runs, it will create a .cache file in the project directory. When X3D goes to run the actual study area, it reads the geometry data from the cache file rather than processing the geometry at the beginning of the simulation every time. There are two main types of geometry cache. There is one that does contain ter uh, terrain edges, and there's one that does not contain terrain edges. This is essentially determined by whether or not terrain diffraction is enabled in the study area properties. The availability of the geometry cache is displayed on the study areas tab of the main window, seen circled here in red on the image. A C indicates that the cache has been generated and is ready to use. If it is blank, it is not there, and the cache will need to be generated at the beginning of the simulation. There are some methods that will invalidate the geometry cache that will uh, require it to be rebuilt at the beginning of a new simulation. One of the main ways to invalidate the geometry cache is by modifying the geometry. So adding or removing new pieces of geometry, modifying any of the existing pieces of geometry through translating, moving, rotating, scaling, uh, deleting any of the faces, changing the sidedness of any of the pieces of geometry, they will impact results, and because of that, the geometry cache will need to be rebuilt. Secondly, uh, modifying the materials on any of the active features will invalidate the geometry cache, so adding or removing materials or replacing materials on active features. Uh, it is worth noting that material properties themselves can be changed, so the, the properties within a material that's in use on a feature can be modified without invalidating the cache. For some examples of these runtime improvements, we've done some in-house testing. Uh, Barcelona, Spain is some geometry we have in a project that is approximately 624,000 faces. Previously in 3.3.0, uh, it Running on a single thread, it took an hour and 38 minutes to process the geometry. 
In 331, on eight threads, it takes two minutes and 38 seconds. Shinagawa is a neighborhood in Tokyo, so there are some larger buildings and some wider streets, some more complex geometry on those buildings. This version of our geometry had about 293,000 faces. In 330, it originally took seven hours and 40 minutes to process the geometry. It now only takes 42 seconds in 331 running on eight threads. It is also worth noting that in 330, geometry processing is required at the beginning of every simulation. So for Shinagawa, if you were to have three study areas, it would this seven hours and 40 minutes would need to be repeated to process the geometry at the beginning of each of those simulations. Whereas in 331, it would process the geometry once in 42 seconds, and then the other study areas would read from the cache file, which would skip this uh, step entirely. I do have a demo open here. This is Wireless Insight 3.3.1. This is a version of the Barcelona geometry I spoke about. You can see here on the study area window, the cache is available for these two study areas. Not on the third one, however, because this study area has train diffractions enabled and the cache has not yet been built for them. As I mentioned, there are some ways to modify material properties that do not invalidate the cache. So an example of that would be to come in here and say, change the conductivity to a different value. And we can see that the cache is still listed as valid on the study areas tab. Now, if we come in here and say, add a new material entirely and replace the existing one with this new material, We can see here in the project view on the left that the material has now been changed to brick for the entirety of the city. Now the cache is invalid. This is the calculation log from the previous run that generated the cache originally. We can see that the geometry caching portion is its own step on this tab up here. It creates the cache file in the project directory here. In this case, it took two minutes and 18 seconds to generate the geometry cache. And then our X3D study area runs and it reads in the cache file rather than processing the geometry at the beginning of the calculation. On subsequent runs, once the cache file is already created, it will skip immediately to this X3D run. Now, we can enable this terrain diffraction. This will build the second geometry cache, the, the one with terrain edges uh, at runtime. So we can go ahead and save the project. And now we can see these two separate tabs that are processing both versions of the geometry with and without the terrain edges included. When these geometry processing steps are done, the study areas themselves will kick off and read from their respective cache files. So to wrap up what was covered, uh, modern complex simulations use large detailed geometry. 
New features and optimizations in Wireless Insight 3.3.1 work to drastically reduce the runtime needed to process geometry. Geometry processing optimizations utilize multi-threading and improved data structures to decrease the overall geometry processing runtime, while geometry caching removes the need to reprocess geometry at the beginning of every simulation, provided a valid cache has already been created. Okay, now we will wrap up here. Uh, again, feel free to contact us if there are any further questions. Uh, Thank you all for attending and have a good day.